Father God, we commit this service into your hands from the beginning to the end. Oh Lord, we pray that your spirit will move through this place. We're praying that your power will move through this place. Anybody that comes into this edifice, they will not leave the same because of an encounter with you, Father God. We're praying that your spirit will encapsulate us, oh Lord, this morning so that we may hear your word and that when we leave, oh Lord, here today, we can go out, oh Lord, and live a life worthy, oh Lord, of your will and of your way, oh Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name that I've prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a wonderful and special day in the house of the Lord. Shall we humbly rise on our feet as we sing some songs of praise unto God and praise his name for he has done wonderful things in our lives. So as we are in church today, if you want to open your mouth, and praise the Lord as we as we praise his name, clap your hands, dance, and give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Alright. So we're gonna clap our hands like this. What are you turning to life? Open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, not like you, yeah. Out of the ashes we rise, out of the darkness we shine, there's no one like you, yeah, not like you.
some scream in the house and you want to put your hands together. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. All right, you want to come like this. Oh, no. 
are so many great things. Indeed, we are grateful and thankful. Before I enter into a time of worship, I would like to respond to my two lines that are one to two. And it reads, the Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. Now it doesn't say that the Lord has done something for you today, so you must worship him, but he is great in all his ways. So this morning I want you to lift up your voice and just love on him, just bless his name. Oh Lord, you are worthy. Oh Lord, you are great. Oh Lord, you are majestic. Oh God. And the honor. Oh Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name, oh, you deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, Lord, we lift our hands to worship you. And as we praise your holy name for you, You do miracles so great. 
all glory to your name. You are holy. You are majestic on your throne. Oh Lord, we can search the heavens and the earth, underneath the earth, and find none, none like you, oh Lord. Who is there who has done such great things? Oh Lord, this morning we give you our highest praise. We give you our deepest worship. And we pray it's befitting unto your name. Oh Father, take your place this morning. Take your place this morning. We know you are here. We pray that you will abide with us till we finish here today. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. Let's keep that hand going for the Almighty God. Amen. Oh, we can do better. Amen. We can still do better. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with every one of us. Amen. How are we doing? Hallelujah. We thank the almighty God for the gift of life. We thank him for what he's doing in his church. We welcome you to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, can you turn to somebody either on your right or on your left and say, welcome to church. Amen. And that's absolutely important. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12 from 22 that we have come into Mount Zion, hallelujah, the city of the living God, into uh, New Jerusalem. Now, when you come to church, you have come into the company of thousands of angels. And when God is present, anything can happen, hallelujah. So once again, welcome to church. We thank the almighty God for what God is doing in our midst today. You may look to your right, you may look to your left, you may find new faces. Do not be alarmed. Hallelujah. We are still in church. Amen. We are still in the presence of the Almighty God. Yesterday was a fantastic, fabulous, great, glorious. Help me with words here. Hallelujah. It was a great day yesterday. We thank the Almighty God that this is happening in our face. This is a testimony of what God is doing in his church. Hallelujah. And by the way, we have a new elder, PIWC Peel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have a new elder in the person of the distinguished elder, Daniel Kwabina Watra. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And his dear wife, Mrs. Help me, help me, help me. Mrs. Stacy Watra. Hallelujah. I'm, I wasn't going to do the long one. I was going to make it simple. Mrs. Stacy Watra. Or for our sake, Dickness Stacy Watra. Hallelujah. Welcome to church again. If this is your first time of worshiping with us, apart from the fact that you came with the family of the Watra, and the Aduchum, if this is your first time of worshiping with us, stay put. We will be coming to you. At some point during the course of this service, we would like to know who you are and who invited you to church. Hallelujah. Welcome again to church, and we thank the Almighty God for what he's doing in this church. In our midst also, you will find familiar faces. Hallelujah. You'll find some faces of the wives of our pastors and who used to once in a time ago worship with us. So in due course, we would also recognize them. Hallelujah. And in our midst also, you know, today is Gospel Sunday. When you have Gospel Sunday and you have the... I'm going to reserve that for our pastor to do the introduction later. So it's a blessing for us today people of God, as you have come into the service of God. At this time, we're going to call on our brother, Brother Amos Mensar, for the Bible reading. This is the time where you bring your Bible out, your iPad, or your phone. And the book we are reading, or two books we are reading this morning. The first one is the book of Third John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Third John, chapter 1, 
verse 1 to 4. And the second book we are reading is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 6. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. Hallelujah. We welcome our brother, Brother Amos Mincer, for the Bible reading. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. All right. As we know, as our um, elder Raph just said, um, today's Bible verse is going to be taken from 3 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. And then the second one is going to be Jeremiah verse 33, chapter 33, verse 6. And I read, the elders to the beloved in guidance, who I loved in the truth, beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you were walking in the truth. Amen. Behold, I bring to you to it health and health and healthing. And I will heal them with the reveal about the abundance of the prosperity and the security. Amen. Oh, we can do better. We can do better. Hallelujah. Now, when we clap in church, we are clapping for the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Uh, and that's the same God that gave us those hands. So when we clap, we clap, and we really clap. Amen. Thank you, our brother, brother Amos Mensah, for the Bible reading. At this point, we're going to call all our kids. And I know now you're going to give them some time. Some of them are coming from um, offices. I know kids, they take their time. Hallelujah. So while they are coming down, we, the adults, are going to do something. Amen. We'll be clapping for the almighty God. Amen. Let's keep those hands going. Kids, if you can calm down. <laughs> Sunday school children, please calm down. Why we welcome our presiding elder, Elder Kweku Dan Sobwadi to pray over them. Jesus loves the little children. Oh. The God of all gifts, we thank you for the life of this gift. 
Father, we thank you. Indeed, you are faithful, God. For blessing us with these young ones, we thank you. Father, we thank you for giving us wisdom to lead and teach them each and every day. We soak their soul, body, and spirit in the blood. My God, we pray that you will protect them from any harm of the enemy. Lord Jesus, we call for retentive memory for these young ones. In this spirit that will change their destiny, we stand on the fire and the blood of Jesus, and we change it in the name of Jesus. Father, as they go to their Sunday school, we commit their teachers to you. My Lord, we pray that you will lead them, give them wisdom and knowledge, because wisdom and knowledge come from your mouth, my God. We pray that, my God, your spirit will fill the leaders in the Sunday school for them to impart greater knowledge in these young ones. Father, it is our prayer that they will be the hearers of your word and the doers of it all. We pray committing their parents to you. Father, Lord, we commit their lives to you. Protect the parents, oh Lord. Anyone who is going through any distress, oh my God, we pray that you will bring stability in their lives. Father, we call for peace in homes, oh Lord. We call for tranquility in homes, oh Lord. We call for unity in homes, oh Lord. We pray that these young ones will be a point of contact, oh God, for you to bind family with your cord of love. We commit their days to you as they go through the week. My God, we pray that you protect them in their schools. You protect them. In wherever they find themselves, my God, we surrender their lives to you. Let your glory be upon these young ones. That greater kids will be upon these young ones. Testimony will manifest in these young ones. In the way of engineering, in the way of law, nursing, Whichever career, my God, you have destined in their lives. We pray that you, God, who never fails, will fulfill in these young ones. We will continue to give you praise. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we should bless you for making time to be here, especially those of us who are involved in the whole of what happened yesterday. We thank God for renewed strength. We thank God for his continued grace. Amen. This morning, we are here to worship our God and to hear from him. Even as you are in his presence, I want you to be expectant and have an open heart. Praise God. And I believe that as we do that, the Lord will meet each and every one of us at the point of our need. Beloved in the Lord, before we continue the service, we have in our midst some person that the Lord has blessed us with today. Um, As we all know, yesterday we had the awesome marriage blessing of our dear Deacon, who became an elder at the program. So please be on your feet. Be on your feet with me. Um, At the marriage blessing yesterday, it pleased the Holy Spirit and our Father, and also us to have our dear Deacon prayed for and ordained as an elder. So going forward, he is an elder of the Church of Pentecost International. Elder Daniel Pabnawatra. God bless you. Please take your seat. In our midst this morning, we have some awesome guests. I'm going to introduce some of them. We know them already as per what is required. We have in our midst Mrs. Dora Opoku, the wife of our minister in Ledbridge. Mama, would you wave us, please? God bless you. She's a known face in this house. Praise God. Um, she was one the women's leader. Am I right? Virtuous ladies. Okay. Okay. And then the husband was the presiding elder. Praise God. Um, the presiding elder, and then he 
joined the full time ministry and was taken to Let Break Break. God bless you, Mama Dora. You are welcome. God bless you. We also have in our midst the wife of our minister for North York District Area Secretary and National Secretary, Mrs. Priscilla <laughs> Chemel. Also a known face. God bless you, Mama. Thank you for coming. I would introduce some of our, I know they are part of the family, but it's important to introduce them. We have the presiding elder for Oakville District, Elder Emmanuel Educhum. God bless you, Elder. Thank you for coming. Elder came with the wife, Dickness Millicent Educhum. God bless you, Mama. We also have Elder Ampoma. God bless you, Papa. And then yesterday, I met one of my long uncles, Elder Pia Kubi. Papa, God bless you. Thank you. Forgive me if I missed the title. People of God, in our midst today, we also have the district minister of Calgary District and the National Literature Committee Chair, Pastor Richard A. J. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. And then in the seat or in the chair today is our National Internal Missions Coordinator and Evangelism Leader, Evangelist Gabriel Adu Asante. <laughs> our father came with a wife, Mrs. Eva Adu Asante. God bless you, Mama. Thank you for coming all the way from Ottawa. We are indeed privileged. And thank you for coming, our dear Pastor Richard, all the way from Calgary. And you're also here. Be seated. Relax in the presence of the Lord. And know that you are precious in his sight. Amen. I'll hand over to our conductor for this morning. Thank you. Hallelujah. We, in a short while, will be listening to the word of God. But to prepare our minds, there will be a song ministration. We welcome our deaconess, deaconess Nana Ama, for the song ministration. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the doing of the Lord. And it is what? Marvelous in our sight. I'm going to say that again. It's the doing of the Lord, and it is. And so it's a season of gratitude for all of us, not just for the couple, for all of us, for what he's done yesterday, today, and what he will continue to do. Amen. So I want us to sing together. We just want to thank God. That's all we're really doing. We just want to thank God. Amen. Great things he has done and great things he will do and on to the Lord be the to the Lord, on to the Lord, be the glory, great things He has done, on to
Praise the Lord. What shall we say to our sister? Grace and peace from God our Father be unto you all this morning. 
We want to take this opportunity to thank our area head, Apostle Daniel Ni Lomote Engman, for such a wonderful opportunity given to us to share fellowship with brothers and sisters. And I also want to uh, take the opportunity to thank my brother, uh, the person of our own dear uh, district minister, overseer, uh, James Agri and Mama Eunice. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to say to the church here that you are privileged to have them as your ministers. Amen. And also want to register my salutation and respect to my senior brother, uh, Pastor Richard J, coming all the way from Calgary to grace the occasion yesterday as well as being here with us today. Amen. And above all, it is such a pleasure to fellowship here at home. Amen. This is where my root is. Amen. And so if we have the privilege to come here, uh, we don't take it for granted. Amen. And so we want to commend the leadership. I salute you, elders, for the good work that you are doing. Uh, today, I want to share with you uh, a very short message. I hope it is short. And after that, we will pray. Amen. And also want to take the opportunity to uh, congratulate Elder and Deaconess Watra for such a wonderful uh, celebration yesterday. And the entire family, may God richly bless all of you. Amen. There was a passage that we read. And I want you to help me read it once again. And if you don't mind, I would humbly indulge you uh, with all humility if you can rise on your feet. We want to read 3 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. 3 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. We will read it together for the entire congregation to read it. Are we ready? Let's go. One, two, the elder. Verse 4. Thank you, it's here. Amen. I will read it again, but before I read, when I was coming, um, I did ask my dear brother, Pastor James, as to what message to preach. And he said, uh, whatever God lays on your heart. And I was battling between different messages. Usually when people hear the title evangelist, they are expecting you always preaching about messages about evangelism. And knowing that today is also Gospel Sunday, I was challenged. But the Lord laid this message on my heart that I believe is a gospel to those of us that have already believed in the Lord and as well as to those who are yet to give their lives to Christ. And so if you are here today, I want you to pay attention to the message. I believe as a minister and minister's wife, our dear Pastor James and Mama Eunice, when they go on their knees, they say prayers for you. And I am very sure that looking at the introductory part of the letter that John wrote to his friend Gaius. I am very sure that it is one of the prayers that they have been praying for the church. And so I'm going to read it as if that Pastor James had sent me the letter to read to the congregation. Because that was what the early apostles would do. They would write a letter, they would give it to someone, the person would deliver it to the church. In this case, it was delivered to a personal friend of this apostle, John. And so, I want to read it from Pastor James and Mama Eunice to the church here. From the pastor to my dear friends, the members of the Church of Pentecost PRWCPO, whom I love in truth. Dear friends, 
I pray that you may prosper in every way and, in be, and be in good health physically just as you are spiritually. For I was very glad when some brothers came and testified to your faithfulness to the truth. How you are working in the truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children, that is my friends, are working in the truth. Amen. Today, the topic that we are discussing is health, wealth, and security. Can we all say it together? Oh, I didn't hear from those at the back. Health, wealth, and security. I believe we are all aware of the explorers who came to this part of the world. In the past, this part of the world used to be inhabited by what we call the aborigines now. Or sometimes now they prefer to be called the First Nations. And so it was some Europeans who decided to travel all the way from Europe to this part of the world. They discovered this land, and then they brought their families, and many people came and joined. And by the grace of God, many of us who might have migrated from Africa, from the Caribbean, we may have come a little late, but we are here also enjoying the good of the land. But history says that when they were coming, according to NASA, when the NASA people decided to go to uh, the moon and the rest, they wanted to study what the early explorers did. And so they sat down to find out what the early explorers did. And what they did was that they came up with two questions. The first question was, how do people adapt to new environments? How do we adapt to new environments? As we are here, we are all coming from different places. To our children who might have been born here, I want to announce to you that your parents, once upon a time, travel all the way from a far land to come here. And even sometimes when you walk around, you see that you have been born here, but sometimes you feel, people make you feel that you don't even belong here or you don't come from here. That was exactly how the early explorers did. So they wanted to know how they were going to adapt to this new world. And the second question is, how are they going to meet their basic human needs? How are they going to meet basic human needs? Brothers and sisters, we do have basic human needs. It doesn't matter how spiritual you may be. A time will come that you need food to eat. You can fast for 40, 40 days and 40 nights. But a day will come that you have to break your fasting. A time will come that you need water to drink. A time comes that you need oxygen to breathe, the air and everything that we enjoy. They are all basic human needs that we need to survive as human beings on this world or on this earth. And per the study that they took, they realized that they needed these things. So what they would do is that they would prepare before they embark on their journey. And when they embark on their journey, either they take these necessary or basic things with them, or they will find a way how they are going to come up with them whilst they are on their journey. And today, when you look at the passage that we just read, as I told you, it was John, the apostle, who was writing a letter to his friend Gaius. I don't know where Gaius from, but it looks as if that John knew a little bit about Gaius. Gaius spiritually had no problem. Because when you look at the passage, John was saying that just as it is well with you spiritually, may it also be well with you physically. Today I came to announce to you that it doesn't matter how spiritual you are, a time comes that you need that physical health as well. Hence, the topic, health, wealth, and security. These are three basic and most important things that we need. Even as we journey through this world, as we await for the appearing of our Lord, as we await for the second coming of Christ, we need help. We need good help. This morning when I walked in, I had the privilege to talk to one of my mothers who has been following me. And she was telling me some help 
battles that he had gone through. We need help to survive, either young or old. We need good help. As well as wealth. Wealth here, when I'm coming to the end of the message, I will go down, I will drop it down to financial breakthroughs. And then we will talk about security. As I told you earlier, John must have surely learned this from Jesus Christ. Because anytime Jesus Christ will minister to people, you realize that he was very much concerned of their spiritual life as well as their physical life and their welfare. And so I am very sure, as I told you earlier, our pastor and our pastor's wife and all the ministers who are in the nation, all the ministers in the COP, all the ministers who are also ministering in different and many other churches, I can tell you that our most concern is your spiritual life. And it's not only that. We are also concerned of your physical health. We are concerned of your wealth as well as your security. And so this morning, if you are here and you are battling with any physical ailments, you are going through any sort of sicknesses or diseases, by the end of this message, I pray that you will claim your health. And I also pray that God will bless us with abundance of his blessings. And then above all, we will be secured in everything that we do. As I told you about the NASA people, you realize when they went to wherever they went, up until today, they have not been able to uh, persuade those of us living on earth to go with them. Because I am very sure that they are yet to find these basic human needs over there. But one time in the lives of the Israelites, the Bible says that they had been taken into captivity. They were taken to a land called Babylon. And whilst they were on that land of Babylon, they went through challenges of all kinds. They went through all kinds of problems. But there was a time that God wanted to bring them to the land that he had promised. The land that they were living on before they were taken into captivity. When they were taken into captivity, they are young men and they are young women. As a matter of fact, they took the most handsome and the most beautiful, the most intellectual ones to the land of Babylon. That is why we got the Daniel, the Shadrach, the Meshach, and the Abednego. They went and served the king of Babylon by the name Nebuchadnezzar. And even those who came after him. But a time came that they had to come back. But while they were discussing their coming back to the land of, uh, of Judah or uh, wherever they were, they were before they were taken, God gave them a prophecy through a prophet called Jeremiah. And that's where our second reading, when we had it in the morning, took us from Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 6. And it was this passage that I got the message that we are sharing with you today. And it reads, Behold, I will bring to it, the it there was referring to the land of Judah. I will bring to it health and healing, and then I will heal them, and then I will also reveal to them abundance of prosperity. Abundance of prosperity, and then security. Health, wealth, and security. We need these basic things even as we await for the appearing of our Lord. Even as we continue to come here to pray every day. As we come here to be ministered to, our souls are ministered to. But we also believe that we also need that or these three things as we await for our Lord. And so I will be talking about them point after point. The first one I want us to take is good health. Good health is needed. It doesn't matter your age. You may be young, but you can be battling with health. You may be old and battling with health. But when the Lord blesses you with good health, oh, you will enjoy your wealth. You can be rich. You can be having a, I mean, a very good job. But if your health is deteriorating, you don't enjoy your wealth. We witness from John's greetings that he was wishing his friend Gaius a health wish. He said, above all, may it be well with you, just as it is also well with your spiritual life. So as I preach, if your spiritual life is not well, I want you to please work on it. Before this, 
the physical aspect of our wish. The spiritual wealth could be that maybe as we sit here, you are not a believer, you have not given your life to Christ. I want to commend to you that you give your life to this Jesus Christ. But you, maybe you may have also given your life to Christ, but life has been taking you around. Today is an opportunity for you to consider the death and the resurrection and also his second coming. But as we go on with the good health, John said this, dear friend, I hope all is well with you and what you are and that you are also healthy in body as you are also strong spiritually. And it was the same thing that God wanted to do for the people of Israel while they were in captivity. In Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17, he said, I will restore to you good health and I will heal your wound, declares the Lord. This morning, this is the message of God unto people who have gathered here this morning. That if your health is deteriorating, he is going to restore your health. When you read it from the NLT, he said, I will give you back your health and heal your wounds. I will give you back your health. Oh, may somebody take back his or her health. And then, there was a time that God also told the people of Israel that there is a particular sickness. That I will make sure that I do not put them on you. That sickness was a sickness that God himself put on the people of Egypt. So it means that sometimes God is able to take us away from these sicknesses. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, he said that I will not bring on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. This morning, may the diseases of Egypt be taken away from us. That is all that I want to say about good health. I want to take more time to talk about wealth. So please, let us journey through. The second one is our security. We need security. We need to be sure that everything that God has said about us will come to pass. We know and we hear of a man called Job. Job went through all sorts of things. Job had wealth. But Job again battled with his health. And so Job was not enjoying his wealth. But a time came that his people or some of his friends came and they were accusing Job. And one of them was by the name Zophar. When Zophar came, when you read Job chapter 11 or chapter 10, Job was complaining about things that he was going through. And one of his friends by the name Zophar also responded to the things that Job was complaining about. And whilst he was responding, he made mention of certain things that I want to share with you when it comes to our security. When you read chapter 11, verse 16 to 19 of Job, but before I do that, let me take you to chapter 10, verse, uh, verse 1, Job chapter 10. When you read Job chapter 10, verse 1, this is Job who was speaking. He said, I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me? The work of your own hands while smiling on the schemes of the wicked. This is how Job felt. All the things that he was going through, Job understood that it was God who had allowed them to happen to him. And so he said that, give me time to complain because I am so disgusted with my life. Sometimes it gets to a point that you become disgusted with your life. Because you may be going through problems. You may be battling with health. You may be battling with all sorts of issues, marital issues, children becoming wayward. And so you are disgusted with your life. And so Job continued in verse 18 of the same chapter. He said, why then did you deliver me from my mother's womb? So Job was saying that why did I even, why was I even born? Why didn't you let me die at birth? I don't know if you have reached that stage. He said it would have been, it would be as though I had never existed. Going directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone. 
that I may have a moment of comfort. Before I leave, never to return. For the land of darkness and utter gloom, it is a land as dark as midnight, a land of gloom and confusion, where even the light is dark as midnight. This is Job, who has reached that stage. He has reached that threshold. The problems and the difficulties that he was going through has overwhelmed him to the point that he wished he was dead. He wished he was not born. It is only when you are battling with health and you are insecure, when you start commenting or even praying such a prayer. But let's listen to what Zophar said. Zophar said that, thought that he was accusing Job. But out of his accusation against Job, I got this message to encourage someone. Chapter 11, verse 16. This is Zophar. He said, you will forget your misery. So Zophar was praying to tell Job that after God has come into your res rescue, you will forget your misery. Then you will remember it as water that is passing by. Your miseries will pass by like a water that is passing by. And your life will be bright or brighter than the noonday. It is its darkness. That is the darkness of your, of your life will be like the morning. Then verse 18, listen. And you will feel secure because there is hope. You will look around and take your rest in security. You will lie down and, no, and none will make you afraid. And many will come and they will court your favor. It is when you are secured in the Lord, people will come and court your favor. People will come and ask you, why, how, or what is happening? How, what are you doing? What, how, how are you making it? What is making that difference in your life? And so Job's friend, Zophar, wanted to tell Job that a time is coming that your life that you wish had not existed, the life that you are so disgusted with, because of the hope in the Lord, you will feel secure once again. This morning, I don't know, maybe, as I said earlier, life might have taken you to places that you wish that you did not exist. There are sometimes people who wish they never traveled to this land. Because maybe, as I speak, immigration is on top of, is, is, is way behind you. When you are driving, it's as if everyone is watching you. But I pray that God will grant you that security on this land. Sometimes when the finances are not going well, you don't feel secure. But I pray for your security. Some of us, sometimes when we are even traveling back home, we don't feel secure. But I pray for God to grant you every security that you need. And then, I want to talk about the wealth aspect so that we will end. And as you go home today, you make sure that you meditate on these three words. Health, wealth, and security. As you pray for your family, as you pray for your children, as you pray for your loved ones, may this be your prayer topic. Wealth. Wealth. When you read the third John once again, we witness that John's expression of joy at the news of the welfare of his friend Gaius. He said that, I hope all is well with you. So John wished the welfare of his friend Gaius. This is the message and this is the prayer of every minister. This is the prayer of every man of God. That we wish the church members, we wish every believer wealth. Because it is through your wealth that the church is also blessed. But let's go on with wealth. I will give you about four points under wealth. And these four points is how you are to think. Your mindset regarding wealth. Wealth. That is what I am going to talk about. Three, four points. The first one is that we must be people who believe in the power of God that is able to make us prosper. Believing in the power of God that is able to make you prosper. There is nothing wrong with prosperity. The only thing we are encouraged is not, not to focus our ministries, not to focus our Christian work with prosperity messages. But it doesn't mean that prosperity is wrong. And so I am praying, and I believe every man of God here this morning is praying. The elders, the deacons, and the deaconesses are always praying that the church members will be well, to, will be doing well according in, 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 their, I mean, in their finances. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it says that 
and you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Power. It means that for you to get wealth, wealth, and for you to be doing well financially, you need power. I want to talk about this power. The power here is the ability to do well. The ability here can be uh, 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 having an innovative ideas, being having that spirit of entrepreneurship. It is not easy coming up with business ideas, but it is only God who is able to give you that power so that the things that everybody is doing that day are not even able to prosper from it. When you touch it, you are able to prosper from it. Let's put that one aside. It is also God's power to give you the ability to be able to innovate, to be able to come up with ideas. I was telling someone that sometimes when we look around, we see some of these children who have been born here just like our children doing well when it comes to sports. Then we will be buying, we will be chasing after their jerseys, the LeBron Jameses and the uh, uh, Kevin uh, Garnett's and all those people. We'll be running, chasing after their jerseys. Why can't our children, be, why can't we have the names of our children also at the back of jerseys that people will be running after them? That we have the NGs and the Bediacons at the back of jerseys that people will be running after. If we can have the Michael Jordan shoe that people will be going to buy for $300, we can have the names of the Muhammad's and the rest, shoes. Sometimes we limit ourselves as if that we are not able to get to that point. But today I am here to declare someone to someone that we can also do it. Because it is God who gives us the ability to do it. The people who are doing very well in the entertainment world. Our children can also do well in the entertainment world. By the grace of God, when you go to Europe right now, when you're watching the European uh, Soccer League, you see a lot of different names, uh, African uh, names. We are praying that here in North America, we are praying that here in Canada, we will be having and hearing these names also in the entertainment world as well as in the sports world. Because we can also do well. May God grant us that ability to do well. Then he said, God may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. This one was a message to the Israelites. And then the writer, or I mean, Moses was telling them that God had a covenant with your fathers. And because of that covenant, he is going to make sure that it happens. Do you know that God has a covenant with this church? One of the covenants that God has with this church is that the church of Pentecost will never go do what? A borrowing. The church will not borrow. But if the church will not borrow, the last time you check, do we have any hospital that is making money for the church? No. Do we have any school that is making money for the church? No. We don't have any other businesses. The only business the church has is the members. And so the worth of the church is in the pocket of the members. So if the church will not borrow, and we believe in this covenant, as a matter of fact, the covenant has been working. Because in that covenant, we were told that this church, this church of Pentecost, will travel all the way beyond Africa. And now that covenant has been realized. By the grace of God, now we have churches all over the world. And the part of the covenant is that the church will do well financially. And so if the church will do well financially, we are praying that the members of the church will do well financially. That when we are talking about the Zoom Lions in Ghana, when we are talking about the Tobigos in Ghana, we will also be talking about people that God has blessed here in Canada. Oh, this is my prayer for you. And I believe this is the prayer for every minister here and every church elder. That God will raise wealthy men and women among us. So that when we stand, we can say that even if we are not able to meet it, we can go to this brother. We can go to this family. It is God who gives us the ability to do well. The second point is that the choice of life of prosperity and a life of want is a decision that one will take. The choice of life prosperity and a life of want is a decision. What I'm trying to say is that 
For you to do well, it depends on you. Amen. It is a mindset that you would have. When you look at Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says that give. It was a present thing. He was talking about a choice that the people have. He did not say that I am coming to take it away from you. He is saying that you give. So it is a choice that you make. Either you give or you don't give. The only thing that the ministers and the leaders of the church can do is to stand here to encourage and convince you based on the word of God. But for you to give is a choice that comes from you. So giving is a choice. But it is a choice that if you follow through, it will lead you to prosperity. Because it's a give and it will be given to you. And when you give and it's been given back to you, it will not be given back to you the same way you gave, but it will be given to you in a good measure. A good measure. We all know what a ruler is. We know, all know what a measure is. When you go to other places where people measure stuff, you know that they, they, they have a standard. So when you set that standard, then he said that it will be pressed down. Pressed down meaning when you take this, uh, pardon me, Pastor, when you take this, you give this, then this one will be given to you. Then it will be given to you in a good measure. And then it will be pressed down. We push it inside. Then, after you, they press it down, what will happen? They will shake it together. It means that they want it to fit everywhere. There will be no air in that container. And then, it will be running over. It is only when they have shaken it well, and it has filled everywhere, and there is no room, no volume, it is only when it will flow over. Then, that will be what will be given to you. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And so this morning, my prayer and the prayer of the man of God for you is that you will do well financially. But they can only encourage. They can only convince. But the choice lies in your hands. Amen. The third point as we move on. Our total obedience to God's word today would impact our tomorrow's success. It is almost the same as the second point, but let me give me time to talk about it. Our total obedience to God's word today would impact our tomorrow's success. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. These are very common passages that we read all, I mean, all, I mean, every day. But I want you to pay attention and follow me. It says, bring the full tithes into the storehouse. Bring it. We are talking about our obedience today. Having an impact on our success tomorrow. Bring the full tithes. The bring there was talking about the present Tens that we need to come and bring whatever that we have. Then he said that, and thereby put me to test. And say, that says the Lord, if I will not, I will not in the future open the windows of heaven for you. Your obedience to the word of God, your obedience and your faith in the word of God today is going to have an impact on your future success. The future success here is not only you. It can also have an impact on the success of your children. There are many, many great men and women of our church. I don't want to take you too far away from di to different churches. Our church has a record of men and women who gave themselves. Some gave their wealth. We are even told that many of them, even some of them gave their jewels when the minister or the man of God came to the land of Ghana. Some of them gave their time. Some of them have given many resources and many are still giving. But when you study the pattern, all these people who gave, God has blessed them. And it's not only unique and peculiar to our church alone. As a matter of fact, giving and blessing is not a unique thing to the church of Pentecost. It is something 
that God gives to his children. Anyone, any church who will give to glorify the name of God and for the propagation of the kingdom of God, God will bless them. And so this one is a principle that when you follow, God blesses you. And so I am telling you that your obedience to that, the, that word of God today is going to impact your future. Young men and women here, may we learn to give. When you study and read about or the history of most rich men in this world, many of them will attribute their wealth to their giving. Even sometimes, not even giving to churches. Some of them, they even give to different sort of organizations. But because of that principle of giving, God always blesses them. I remember some years ago, I was working in one of the hospitals in Calgary. And at one night shift, I was talking to uh, an Indian young lady. And we were talking about um, churches and their, uh, and, and their, I mean, their form of organization. Silk, I think she was a silk. And she told me that they give and they believe that when they give, they will be blessed by God. So giving and receiving is not a unique thing even to Christianity. And so if you apply this principle, oh, there is that surety that God will bless you. Let's move on to our fourth point as we get closer to the end. The fourth point, God's giving of an opportunity to give. Listen to my English here very well. God giving an opportunity for you to give is his giving of an opportunity to get wealth. So it means that anytime God gives you an opportunity to give, he is testing you and he's trying to give you an opportunity to bless you. In the hands of God are many blessings. But in your hands, you are holding few dollars. But God wants you to release that dollar. Once you release that dollar, then he's able to release the blessings that are in his I pray that we understand this principle. When I was studying this, I came across something that interests me a lot. And I want to read from Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4 says that for every house, oh, can you project that for us? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4. Hebrews 3, 4. For every house is built by someone. So your house that you are living in, I believe it was built by some company, correct? And you purchase, sometimes you even go and purchase the land before the house is built. Am I right? So that house is built by somebody. Here you say that the house belongs to someone, but God is the builder of everything. The everything there includes what? The house that you live in. So he's trying to tell you that everything in this world is owned by God. And so if you can get something in this world, it is this God who will give it to you. So the house that you live in, that you built, belongs to God. As a matter of fact, including even yourself. The, the earth and the, the earth is for the Lord. And everything that the earth contains, the silver, the gold, and everything that we see. And then in First Corinth Chronicles chapter 29, one and one, verse 12, he said that both riches and honor come from him, and he rules over them all. In his hands lies the power and the might that are able to make one great. Let me move on and finish with the last point. The last point is the principle of seed time and harvest time must be understood and adhered to. It means that everything that God does on earth comes from this basic principle. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 talks about that, seed time and harvest time. But let me tell you this, for God to win you and I, do we all know that it came a time that we, God lost us into the hands of the enemy? And there was no relationship between man and God. But for God to win you and I to himself, God had to do what? Had to give up his only begotten son. And so, it is a principle that if you apply it even to your finances, God will also bless you. 
Amen. We all know that man has to give out some seed, that is the sperm, before a child can be born. And so to receive financial blessings, we must learn to give out and give up our finances in the hands of this great provider. And as we read earlier from Luke chapter 6, verse 38, that says that when we give, it will be given to us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and it will run over. For with this measure, oh, that we will use, that God will also measure unto us. Today, I came to tell someone that you need good health. Then you need health, wealth, and also security. But I am ending by telling you that for you to gain these three basic human needs, there is the need for you to give your life to Christ. So if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, yes, you have spoken about the principle of giving. God can bless you all right. But there is a time or a day is coming that he is going to come and take all of us to the most glorious place that we will enjoy eternity. That one, this, the wealth and the health here on this land may not matter. Even if you, he does not grant you that health, even if he does not grant you that security, even if he does not grant you that wealth, when you go to spend that eternity with him, you will enjoy the rest of your life with the creator of this world. So if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, yes, yes, we are praying that it will be well with you physically. But we are praying the most important thing is that it will be well with you spiritually. And if you are here and it is well with you spiritually, meaning if you have already given your life to Christ, I am also here telling you that please learn this principle of giving. And through that, God will bless you with wealth, health, and security. May the good Lord bless his word. Amen. Amen. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be. I shall not be, I shall not be moved, yeah, I shall not be, I shall not be moved, just like a tree planted by the waters. Thank God for the powerful message given by our evangelist. In this life, health, wealth, security is very important. And as he concluded, he mentioned that the most important security that we can have is the salvation of our souls. Hallelujah. Because it guarantees life, not just in this world, but in the world to come. You know, the U.S. has the best of security for their president, uh, the secret service. But with all the technology and so on, about four or five of U.S. presidents have been assassinated and assassination attempts have been made on others. But the best security is in Jesus Christ. Amen. The country I come from, you could have all the wealth but sometimes even your security men, security women, will be the ones that will connive with thieves to come and break into the home. And they will pretend they know nothing about it. But on Christ is the solid rock. Amen. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the apostle John prayed for Gaius. Gaius was a believer. And he said, that, Beloved, I pray, I wish above all things that all things will be well with you and you'll be in good health even as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And so as our soul prospers, God also wants our physical bodies to prosper. God also wants our pocket to prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. And even Satan acknowledged this in, in Job chapter 1. You know, evangelists read from uh, various um, verses in Job. Job chapter 1 verse 9. This is what uh, Satan said. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, his possessions, and have, have increased in the land. Hallelujah. Amen. When we serve the Lord, he blesses us. He has a hedge of protection around us. Around our families. That is the security. Hallelujah. Amen. And then around even our possessions. I want to be like Job. Hallelujah. In his days, he was, you know, when the, the, the rich people were being counted, his name was among them. Hallelujah. Amen. God doesn't want us to serve him and just subsist. He wants us to serve him and prove to the world that, in fact, all wealth comes from him. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we are going to pray that God who wants our, our, our health is the same God who wants our security. It's the same God who wants us. He says he gives us the ability to make wealth. Hallelujah. And I will claim all these promises. No word of God has ever failed. In our life, may God's word never fail. May we see his hand in our life. And that we too rise up. I love the, the, the fact that our um, evangelist mentioned that we buy Michael Jordan's shoes, LeBron James' shoes. May we have the AJ shoes. May we have the Watra shoes. May we have the Ofori shoes that people will buy to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Shall we rise up? I shall not be, I shall not be I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaves shall not wither but whatever he does shall prosper the ungodly are not so we want to lift up a prayer Lord, help me to be obedient to your word. Help me to live for you. Help me to walk in your ways. The apostle says that I was glad when I, I was told that my children are walking in the truth. May we walk in the truth of God's word. May we abide in uh, the, the uh, laws of the Lord. Lift up a prayer. Lift up a prayer. Our God wants us to be a people that are obedient, that live in conformity to his word. That do not go against his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Mandere be shete kebe, ila masundo riandaraba, kindaraba shanda riandere be zete. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are faithful. Help us, O oh Lord, to be obedient to you. Help us, O oh Lord, to give up ourselves fully to you. Help us to be blameless in your sight. It's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Let your Holy Spirit help us. Let your Holy Spirit lead us. Let your Holy Spirit touch us to be the people you want us to be. 
Father, on our own, we are nothing. May we love what you love. May we hate what you hate. May we be like Job in our generation. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Ile makabora masanda rianda rama ile le 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 masanda ke poro boshete rianda rama kila basudo ro boshete rianda rebe e bakala masudo rianda rama my God help us to be obedient to you help us to show to you help us to walk in your way in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. When I claim the promises of God, the Apostle John prayed for Gaius that it might be well with him, that he'll be in good health, and that all things will go well for him, even as his soul's prospers. And the psalm says that, oh, we shall be like trees planted by the water side, that our leaves will never wither. We want to claim that promise of the Lord, that in our lives we will see the mighty moving of God. We'll be in good health. If anyone is sick, Jesus is a great physician. May he heal us from head to toe. If anyone's finances is an issue, may the Lord arise. May the Lord bless his people. May the Lord cause his glory to shine. God protect us in our going out and our coming in. Just as he formed a hedge around Job and his family and all that he had. May the hedge of the Lord be great for us. That even Satan can acknowledge that the hand of the Lord is upon us. Lift up a prayer. Lift up a prayer, somebody. Like God's promises will come true. He who promises that, yea and amen, that it will be well with you. It will be well with your soul. It will be well with your, your health. It will be well with your finances. It will be well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ila masudoria nama ke para masandaria derebe in the mighty name of Jesus we claim oh Lord we speak your word we speak your word we speak your word that Lord we are blessed that it shall be well with us that all things will go well with us even as our soul prospers we thank you for our salvation. And Lord, we know you are good, you are good, you are good. Karoba Santa Namasete, Mina Namasitabo, Ilelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelel
He is the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Even in a time of famine, he blessed Isaac. And Isaac planted and yielded an increase. We are praying that we will have faith in his way. We are praying that we will not look at our circumstances. But we see a God who is faithful and obey him even in our giving. If that we too, God will bless us abundantly. Oh, so one elder, that a friend of mine, his prayer is that God make me a kingdom financier. We want to pray that God will bless us. God will bless our jobs. God will bless our businesses. God will make us business owners that we will be able to do good with the blessings he has given us. Lift up a prayer, lift up a prayer. You want to pray that God, oh, who is almighty, who is the great provider, Jehovah Jireh, the one who promises that even in the wilderness, he is able to make streams flow. May he make streams flow in the wilderness, in our life, in every situation. May he bless us. May he bless our finances. That we will have an increase in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kandorobo Shenderi Adonama. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Kidorobo Shenderi Adonama. He loves Otori and the name of Shenderi. He loves Otori and the name of Shenderi Adonama. He Yes, Lord. May you bless your people. May you prosper your people. In our finances, Lord, may we be the head and never the tail. May we, O oh Lord, never go abhorring in the mighty name of Jesus. In times of inflation, may you, O oh Lord, our God, you are able to bless us. You are able to cause your glory. You are able to cause your power. You are able to cause your might to abound upon us and to show your power. Lord God Almighty, let your people see your goodness. Let your people see your ability, your, your mighty hand. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I know his wonderful. I know his wonderful. He's my The Savior, the Healer, the Sanctifier. The Bible says He sent forth His word and healed their diseases. Today, as the word of the Lord has come to us, may we appropriate the healing of the Lord. If anyone is sick, declare that by His stripes you are healed. Whatever the healing, whatever the disease, oh, our God is able. From head to toe, from even what is hidden, our God is able to reveal. Go before the Lord, claim the healing. Oh, you said that you sent forth your word to heal my disease. I am no longer sick. I don't have cancer anymore. I don't have diabetes anymore. I don't have migraines anymore. By your stripes, Jesus, I declare healing. I declare healing. I declare healing. I declare healing. Kandorabo shenderi adanaba. 
The Lord our God, you are mighty to, to, to heal. You are mighty to heal. You are mighty to heal. Let healing be the portion of your people. Lord, this day, let them have testimony that God, you are more than able. You are more than able to heal. Glorify your name, O God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Shall we be seated in prayer? I need no other argument. I need no other have not given your life to Jesus Christ. All these things that we are talking about, about that security, don't have that security. Because it's only in Jesus do you have a refuge place. It's only in Jesus do you have that hedge of protection. It is only in Jesus do, are you saved. If you are here, you have never given your life to Jesus, let today be a special day. The day of salvation. Jesus says all who come to him, he will in no wise cast out. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. But the Bible says with our heart we believe. With our mouth we make confession unto salvation. If we will declare that Jesus is Lord, we shall be saved. It is only then that can we appropriate the blessings of the Lord. Can we appropriate all that Jesus promises in our lives? If you are here, you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can raise your hand and we'll pray with you. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Has your faith found that resting place? Not in anybody's device or creed but in Jesus alone. Is there anyone who wants to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life? Is there anyone? Thank you, Thank you. We give you the glory. Thank you for the word that has come to us. 
from today, we pray, O oh God, that we are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be well with us in Jesus' mighty name. He said, you wish above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Therefore, we pray that as a church, we will prosper Amen. and be in health Amen. all the days of our lives. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Lord, we pray that our lives are secured. Amen. They are secured in you. For you are the anchor that holds us. And we thank you, oh God. Our marriages are secured. Our relationships are secured. Our future is secured in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. May we never be the same again. As the word of God has come to us. Help us to walk in the word. Help us to walk in a way, oh God, that we will never deviate from it, but we shall be led by the word every day and every season. If there be anyone among us, the Lord needs a financial breakthrough. As your manservant spoke, so we echo the word and let it cause wealth to come and manifest in every area of our financial life. We bless you, King of Kings. We exalt your name now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 God bless you. Our dear Pastor Akosa Achampong of Calvary Worship Center in Calgary. God richly bless you. What shall we say to our dear evangelist, Gabriel? God bless you, Papa. Also to Mama Eva. God bless you, Mama. And also to our pastor, Richard J. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Beloved in the Lord, you have received what is good for your soul. Amen. Go and walk in this word. Praise the Lord. In Jesus, you are assured of security. Praise God. You see, the Bible said that the angel of the Lord encamp around those who fear him. That is for you. As long as you fear the Lord, you are safe and secure. So do not break the hedge. Should I repeat that? Do not break the hedge. Hallelujah. As for financial prosperity, it is for our taking. But walk in the principle. This morning, grace of entrepreneurship has been released. You see, when the Lord drops the idea, act out of faith. Praise God. Some of us, we ought to work to earn a salary. Some of us, that is our portion in the land of the living. Hallelujah. But for some of us, we ought to establish businesses for others to be brought in. May you become a kingdom financier in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace. You see, somebody has lifted their hands. Receive that grace. Be a kingdom financier. Amen. Amen. Please take over. Hallelujah. Oh, it could be loud. Hallelujah. Amen. It's such an awesome Sunday today. When we have so many men of God from coast to coast visiting us and ministering to us. And we also have the wives of our pastors from different places coming into this sanctuary. Tell yourself I'm blessed. Oh, you are not convinced. I am blessed. Amen. Amen. At this point in the course of our service, this is the time to fulfill what the word of God has said. The give and it shall be given to you. This is the time for us to prove it. We'll be taking our tithe and offering for those in the sanctuary the offering bowl will be at the front for those who may want to give physical cash. Just as the ushers will be directing us, come to the front and drop the offering in the bowl. If you're writing a check, P-I-W-C-P-O, C-O-P-P-I-W-C-P-O. Let's make it easy. C-O-P-P-I-W-C-P-O. If you're writing a check, 
And if you need an envelope, hallelujah, if you do need an envelope, the ushers are at the back. If you raise your hand, they will come to you. And those of us who are giving online, online via e-transfer, the email address is piwcpl at gmail.com. We can see it up, piwcpl at gmail.com. And for our online audience, the address, again, the email address is piwcpl at gmail.com. We also have what is called the Tightly Hub. Just look up Pentecost International Worship Center and your giving will be received. Hallelujah. May God who give bread and who give seed continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We will, um, all right. Oh, hallelujah. Shall we humbly rise on our feet? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Are you ready to give God some praise? Hallelujah. Then I want to see you clap like this. Let's go. Let's go. Because it's good and his mercy shall endure. Because it's good yeah, and his mercy shall endure. Because he's good. Yeah.
Lord, I turns my life around. He turns my life around. Everybody say, He makes a way. See, oh, I say, who has the final say? Let me see you that say, let me see you that say, run to the Lord, run to the Lord, run to the Lord. I say, glory be to God in the highest. Everybody shout hallelujah. 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 One 
Father Master, we thank you and we bless you for even giving us the ability to give unto you. It is just joyful to give unto you as this opportunity has given us. We thank you and we bless you for this opportunity. As we pray over this offering, we pray that you continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to open windows of opportunity for us, Lord, as we brought our tithe and offering unto you, Lord. We know that as your word has said unto us, you should bring all our tithe into the storehouse of God. And you open the windows of heaven. And as we obey you, we know that you're going to open the windows of heaven and bless us in abundantly. We thank you for your, for your word. And Father Master, we pray unto you. Even as we are here, if somebody could not even offer unto you and willing that they will have an opportunity, we pray that you open the windows for them. You create opportunity for them that they will also have the opportunity to give unto you and you will use that opportunity to bless them. We thank you and we bless you and we know that you are going to use this offering to minister and to expand your work. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, first and foremost, we'd just like to thank you for hanging in with us. I know it's been stretched a bit, but this is a special Sunday. Hallelujah. At this point in the course of our service, we're going to welcome the latest couple in town. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as far as information reaching out, the latest elder of the church. Amen. So we welcome the Watra family to give their thanks, as well as the Adichum family. Please, if you... If you're with the family, just come around. Hallelujah.
lovely wife. Uh, and, and our family on both our families on both sides. We wanna once again thank the Lord for we wanna once again thank the Lord for the grace and the opportunities given unto us. By his grace we were able to tie the knot and become one yesterday. And we want to give him praise and glory for what he's done. It was such a beautiful day, right from the morning all the way to the evening. Um, I think Stacy didn't want to leave, but she had to. Um, but it's been, it was an amazing time in, uh, in the presence of God. And we want to give him all praise and adoration for who he is and for what he's done. Once again, we want to thank our dear national head, Apostle Ransford, Obing Jemfi, and Mama Irene uh, for the continuous love and support um, their encouragement for just being there for us. I'm sure I, I think he's at McKeon Worship Center. We just want to say, Apostle and Mama, we thank you so much and God richly bless you. To our area head, Apostle Daniel Neil Lomote Eggman and his wife, Mama Debbie, we also want to say God richly bless them for their love and support. We want to thank them for encouraging us and guiding us along the way. We also want to thank once again, the various area heads across the nations for their continuous love and support. We want to thank the pastors, um, both locally and afar, for their support as well, too. I want to give a big shout out to the chair of the occasion, Evangelist Gabriel Asanteado and his wife, Mama Eva, for coming all the way from Ottawa to grace this occasion. Shall we give them a round of applause? When, when it comes to evangelists, like he said, he's from, he's from here. And I remember being a young man at Brampton Church. He was doing the translation, and I used to meet him at the public library studying. So we go way back. And <laughs> for the last three, four months, he would call me just to check in on me and see how things are going. And when I sent him an invitation, he said he would promise he would be there. So we want to say God richly bless him and his family for grace in this occasion. Another thanks goes to my dear Pastor Richard Ajay. Shall we give him a round of applause? If you know a little about me, you would know that back in the day I used to do flyers and take photography and stuff. It's all because of him. He laid the foundation and set the tone for me. And because of him, I am who I am today, and I want to say, Pastor Rich, God richly bless you for coming all the way from Calgary. We really, really, really do appreciate it. We want to say thank you, and God richly bless you. He's not here, but I want to shout him out. I want to give a big shout out to Overseer Lord Badu. My, we call each other Covenant Brothers. He's been a best friend. He's been a brother, and I really do appreciate him. When he was being transferred to Moncton, we spoke, and, he, and one of the things that we said we would miss was our interaction. But even while he's there, our bond and relationship is even closer than before. So I know he's on assignment. Um, I just want to tell him, yo, bro, I appreciate you. <laughs> All right? God bless him and Phoebe. To Pastor Akosa Achampo. <laughs> Mighty man. <laughs> I want to thank him so much. He's also been a great support in my life. Um, he knows what he's done for me. And I want to say God richly bless you. I don't want to say much. I know we, our time is far spent, so I'm going to try to speed this through. To Overseer James Benjamin Ananagre and his wife, Mama Yu, we want to salute you and say thank you so much. Um, they are counselors. They are pillars of this place, and we bless God for their lives and for imp impacting our lives and for investing in us. We bless them so much. We want to thank the elders, deacons, and deaconesses. also want to thank our dear father, Pastor Lawrence Menu. Unfortunately, he's not here, but we do want to thank him as well, too. We want to thank the entire presbytery, the church congregation for your prayers, your support. Um, when the news came out, some people were joking around with me. I'll be blasting in tongues when they, when, when they hear. Um, but I, 
when the news came out, they prayed for us. You guys prayed for us, and we want to say we're really grateful for you, for you guys. Special shout out goes to other Danso Buedi and his wife Auntie Sandra for their help and support. I want to say God bless you. God bless you so much, and to my man, other brother Aqua and Mama Sarah, I appreciate you so much. To our family, I want to start off with my in-laws. You see, my in-laws, my in-laws are a lot. And I, I, I'm grateful f- for their lives, starting from Elder John and Puma, and Mrs. Gladys and Puma, um, to the whole extended family. We want to say God bless you. Some of them came from the States. Some of them came from various places. We want to say God richly bless you for your continuous support and love for us. On my own behalf, I want to thank you for accepting me into your family. I'm very grateful. I want to thank my family. Um, my family is a big family. Um, I want to say God richly bless you guys. And to my siblings, like I said yesterday, I have a lot of siblings. Um, and they know who they are. And I want to say God richly bless you. Especially those of you who supported me the last year. You know who you are. And I want to say God richly bless you. To our parents, once again, we thank you. To my mom, we appreciate you so much. Unfortunately, my dad and mom weren't able to, Apostle Dr. James Queen and Mom Emily weren't able to make it due to some unforeseen circumstances, but they are watching. So we say, God richly bless you. We love you so much. And to Joyce, Uncle Gordon, we love you so much. Um, to everyone who supported in various ways with this whole um, wedding process, when it comes to AV, instrumentalist, transportation, money table, and the people in the background, we want to say, God richly bless you. Thank you so much. If I forgot anyone or if we forgot anyone, please forgive us. Um, there's so many on our mind, names on our minds, but do please forgive us. We don't mean it in any harm or any way, but we want to say God bless everyone, every single person. We want to say God richly bless you. Amen. Amen. We have just a small token to thank the Lord for what he's done. God richly. Actually, one more person. I want to thank my uncle, Mr. Yao and his wife, Gifty, right there. We want to salute you. Say thank you so much. Thank you so much. God richly bless you. All right. Bless you guys. Hallelujah. We promise you in a few minutes we will be out of here. But before we do, on behalf of the church of Pentecost PIWCPO here in Mississauga, we do have a little gift to the new couple in town. So I'm going to hand over the microphone to Osofumami to do us the honors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is from your family. This is from us. And from on behalf of PIWCPU District, we want to give this to you as a token of our love. May the Lord bless your marriage. We're so happy for you and we know that the Lord will continue to flourish your marriage in the name of Jesus. God bless you. you're not leaving, please. We do have, um, from your ministry, the ministry that God has committed into your hands, our elder, the evangelism ministry has a token to present to you as well. Amen. So we just want to present this small token to both you, elder, and Deaconess, as um, a gift to commemorate this um, 
commemorate this moment from the evangelism ministry, and we give this to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will be listening to our announcements at this point. It's going to be projected, and um, again, we promise to let you out in a few minutes. Amen. Church and a happy, happy Sunday to you all. This is PIWC Peel, where God lives and reigns, and you are now watching PIWC Peel Press Broadcasting Kingdom News. My name is Daniela Duguati, and my name is Crystal Edichum, and let us do well to take note of the following announcement. So the theme of the month is repositioning marketplace ministers under the books of the month, which are Esther and Judges. Amen. The book of Judges talks about conquering territory. Mm. So I pray that we use the theme of the month, the repositioning of marketplace ministers to delve into this word and take it into our own daily lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Christopher. That. Our morning devotion continues every Mondays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. Our Bible studies continue every Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. And of course, our empowerment service every Fridays in person in the same century, every Fridays at 8 p.m. So please do all to plug yourselves in all throughout our midweek services. Don't forget to mark this upcoming event in your calendars, church, as there will be an area North York Holy Spirit Convention happening from October the 23rd to the 29th. Amen, that is right. You know, Crystal, in the Bible it says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Amen. So let us do well to come for our Holy Spirit North York Area Convention. See you there. Amen, sis. Thank you for that. I receive it. Amen. Now, church, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms at PIWC Peel and at PIWC Peel Youth for our youth pages. That is right. And if you're visiting us for the very first time, we welcome you to PIWC Peel, where God lives and reigns. That is right. If you are online, please be sure to click the link that has dropped in the live chat right now and connect with us there. And if you are joining us in person, we have not forgotten about you. Just give us a wave. Don't be in a rush to leave after service as pastor and presiding elder would love to chat with you, connect with you, and welcome you into our family. Amen? Amen. That is right. This is all the announcements we have for you for this week. God richly bless you, and we pray that you have an amazing week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. You can beat that, right? Thank you, Crystal and Daniela. I have a quick uh, secular here to read to you all, and uh, I'll make it snappy. Um, it is one of those that we wish we wouldn't read, but um, as protocol demands, when things like this happen, we need to let the church public know. So this secular is coming from the office of the chairman, and it is signed October 19, 2023, Directed to all assemblies, the Church of Pentecost worldwide. Dear beloved, excommunication of Sister Rebecca Aforiwa, also known as Abena Becky, of Birmingham District in the UK. If your brother or sister sins, go, uh, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen to the ch even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. Warm Calvary greetings of peace and love to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many social media users 
may have noticed that a woman by name, Rebecca Afuriwa, also known as Abena Beki, who is a member of the church in the UK, has been sharing videos vilifying the leadership and the entire church of Pentecost. Several meetings with her by her presiding elder, district pastor, area executive committee, the body of the apostles, and the national executive committee in the UK to help her express her grievances, if any, for redress have all proved futile. Sister Rebecca Afriwa was suspended on May 8, 2022, due to her failure to comply with the leadership of the church in the UK. In addition to, the, the, to her refusal to comply with her suspension, she was over the period, con she has over a period continued to make unfounded accusations and insulting, and making insulting remarks about the church and its leaders, showing no signs of remorse or repentance. With the following, with the foregoing, the Executive Council of the Church has excommunicated Sister Rebecca Aforewa, also known as Abena Beki, from the Fellowship of the Church of Pentecost. Therefore, we are by this letter informing the church public that henceforth, Sister Rebecca Aforewa is no longer a member of the Church of Pentecost. May the Lord continue to build his church. Yours in the service, this is signed uh, uh, Chairman Apostle Eric Nyameche. Amen. I know I can get the amen is so low because I understand, and that's a good response to a secular like this. So, but this is not the time for us to vilify her either. But it's a time for us to continue to pray for our sister that by the mercies and the grace of God that she will be restored. Amen. Hallelujah. We mentioned earlier on that if uh, you're not with the family of the Adichum or the Watra, and this is your first time of worshiping with us here, we'd like to recognize you. By show of hand, if this is your first time of worshiping with us and you're not with the family, can we see your hands up, please? Hallelujah. We will bring the microphone close so that we can... Hallelujah. Thank you for coming to church. We'd like to know your name, and we'll invite you to you. Amen. My name is Gloria Abwadi Mensa, and I came with my sister to worship with you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Faith Okarapa, and I was invited this morning by Pastor James. Amen. Amen. The Lord continue to add to his church, and we thank his name for that. A pastor is going to come up for the prayers for the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have committed ourselves as a church that as we round up every Sunday, we would intercede for the nations. And today, being August 22, we'll be interceding for three nations. October, we'll be interceding for three nations as per the mission's directive for prayers. We'll be praying for Sudan, Sri Lanka, and then Spain. Can we shut off maybe some of the lights? In addition to that, we also pray for the issue in the Gaza Strip. In the past week, the Lord was gracious. Today we are focusing on the release of hostages. Two hostages were released, and the comment was that never has it happened in the history of the group that took them hostage, to release hostages without any ransom. So we want to stand in the gap that God will intervene. Hallelujah. Shall we please be on our feet, if you don't mind. All nations shall praise your name. All nations shall praise, shall praise your name. All nations shall praise your name. All nations. Oh, my. 
give you the nations. I want to pray that there will be peace in the Gaza Strip. We are praying for the safe release of hostages even in the coming week. Look at it as a brother or sister taken from home. We want to cry out to the Lord that the Lord will turn the hearts of men and women even to do what is right in the name of Jesus. May Jesus, the Prince of Peace, intervene. Shall we begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we stand in the gap. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, you have given us authority that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. This morning as we stand before you, we lift up the Gaza Strip into your hands. We are praying for your peace. We are praying for your peace. We are praying for your peace. Father, we are praying for your peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, may Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Rain, rain, rain. Jesus shall rain wherever the sun rises. In the name of Jesus, let your peace reign there. We are lifting up those that have taken others hostage, Lord. We are praying that even this week there will be a release of hostages. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Makatala ya mazuri andala la baba indele mikaya baba roko tolo yo indele mika bori andale masuka bahanda kata dibri antala ya baba indele mika loka bahanda kata indele makaya baba tender heart oh God even in the mighty name of Jesus let your peace prevail in any war torn country. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your peace reign. Let your peace reign. Let your peace reign in Jesus' name. Beloved in the Lord, we want to continue standing in the gap this morning. We are praying for Sudan. We are praying for Sri Lanka. We are praying for Spain. For Sudan, Sudan has suffered conflict for so long. But because of our brothers and sisters there, so that souls will not die in their sins and go to hell. We are praying that the conflict in the nation will cease. In the name of Jesus, we are praying for revival of the church in Sudan. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are also praying for Sri Lanka. We are praying for the spiritual, financial, and numerical growth of the church of God in that country. And we are praying for the National Head of the Church of Pentecost, Overseer, Senior, Jesupalan, and all the leaders and their families, that the grace of God will abound for them. Shall we begin to pray? Rabahanda kata. Le bazuri anda le kabahanda kata in de lemika. Bore anda le masu kabahanda la ya kata in de lemika. Bore antala ya baba rabakata andala ya kata. Li bazu anda le kabore anda le kabahanda kata. Li bakata la ya baba handa kata anda kaba. You told the disciples to go and you are with them always. Even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus. Father we lift up Sudan before you. You have sent your servant there to preach the gospel. We are praying in Jesus name. That because their feet have step there. Let peace prevail in Sudan. Let peace prevail in Sudan. Let peace prevail in Sudan. In the mighty name of Jesus, we send your servant who are there. We lift up the churches in Sudan. Let there be a mighty revival. Let there be a 
mighty revival. Let there be a mighty revival. Let there be a mighty revival. An outpouring of your spirit, even on that nation, in the name of Jesus, that many will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for Sri Lanka. We are praying for divine prosperity. We are praying for financial breakthrough, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that your church will grow numerically, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are praying in Jesus' name. Let there be spiritual growth. Let there be spiritual growth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We lift your servant and the family and all the believers there and all the church leaders. Let your grace abound for them. Let your mighty hand rest on them. Anoint them with fresh oil. In the mighty name of Jesus, when they stand to speak, may they speak your oracle. Let signs and wonders follow the teaching and the preaching of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We are lifting Spain before the Lord. You see, the church of Pentecost has a unique covenant that from Ghana, the church will go out onto many nations, what others call reverse missiology. But in most cases, you see that when we go, it is sometimes the gathering of the same people who used to be there and have come. So if we have been honest with ourselves, for most of us here, we are either Ghanaians or Ghanaian descent. But God's agenda is that the nations will be saved. We are praying for the salvation of the indigents, even in Spain. That wherever the church has gone, oh, may the indigents accept the gospel. Even in the name of Jesus. We are praying for genuine conversion of members to remain faithful and committed to God. And we are praying that, oh God, for the members who are then having challenges with their documentation, may God show them mercy. Even if they go there through certain means that God did not approve, we are praying that God in your mercy, you are a God of mercy. Show mercy, show mercy, and help them to secure their documents and find sustainable jobs. We are praying that we will understand and they will know deeply the importance of giving. Even to support the work. And then we lift out the church leaders there. Shall we begin to pray? Kaba handa kata. Bore and talaya kaba. Indele mika. Kabore andale. Ma kaya baba. Raba kata. Indalaya kata. Rababa anda kata. Bore andale. Kindalaya baba. Roko toloyo. Indele mazuri. Kandalaya baba. Handalaya kata. We lift Spain before you, O oh God. Even Canada also, we are praying for the salvation of the First Nations. We are praying for the salvation of the indigenous. In the name of Jesus, may they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, we are praying for breakthroughs, even in these groups, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, your word is alive and active. We pray that as your word is preached, let the heart of men and women be turned around. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us souls be saved. Let souls be saved. Let souls be saved. You have sent us to go. In our own power, we cannot win souls. But Father, we are praying. Let your power and your anointing rest on your servant in Spain. And even across Europe, let a great revival flow in this block. In the mighty name of Jesus, turn the block back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, he will He will accomplish the Lord who be gone. Accomplish it. Let this word sink into your spirit. The Lord who began it. Oh, He will, He will accomplish. He's the Alpha and Omega. Oh, the beginning. Complete. 
Jesed. I'm reading a brief scripture and then I want you to fall at the cross even as we step out here into this week. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Hear this child of God. What God has said about you, he will do it. The Lord who began it, he will finish it. Hold on to his word. How he will do it, you cannot imagine. That is why his ways are far. His approach is not your approach. His calculation is none than yours. You want to live here in full faith. God, you have said it. I believe it. I trust you. I'm looking up to you. I'm holding on to your word. Grant me the strength to stand for you. Shall we begin to pray? Rabba handa kata. Bore andala ya kaba. Le bazuri andale. Kantala ya kata. Bore antala ya kaba. Rabba katala ya kata. You have assured us of good health this day. You have assured us of divine security. You have assured us of financial breakthrough. We are holding on to your word. We are trusting you, Lord. We know you will do it. We know you will accomplish it. Therefore, we bless your name. We fall at the cross in the name of Jesus. Wipe every sorrow. Grant strength for the race. Grant grace for the race. Show mercy, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. This week, we are trusting you and expecting a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. This week, we are expecting a divine visitation. In the mighty name of Jesus. This week, we are expecting a breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. You started it. You will finish it. You will finish it. Katahanda kaba. Bore antala ya kaba. Liba zuri antala ya kaba. Roko tolo yo indele mika. Raba handa kata bori andale. Liba zu kaba handa kata indele mika. Raba katala ya kata handa kaba. You will hide us under your wings. Even in the name of Jesus. And you will carry us upon your strong wings. No harm will befall us. Even in the name of Jesus. You know humility will invite our mama Mrs. Eva Ado Asante to please pray for us and our Father Evangelist will bless us. Father, this afternoon we thank you. We thank you that you have visited us. We thank you for your presence that we have seen this afternoon. We commit our week into your hands. We ask that you take control and take charge. Lead us accordingly. Drive us wherever we go in our workplaces. Let us be seen as your children, and let us exemplify you. Our children going to school, Father, they are in your hands. I pray that you secure them, protect them, guide them, give them the understanding that they need. In Jesus' name have I prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Give us thy grace, O Lord, thy grace we need. Thy grace, O oh Lord, we need to do your Now may the balm of Gilead be applied to any sick body. We restore and we give back good health to anyone sick here in the name of Jesus. And again, may security and peace
be found in the walls of everyone here. In our homes, in our workplaces, may the good Lord grant us the peace and the security that we need. And above all, may he grant us the power, the ability to make wealth. May he bless us beyond measure. May he cause his face shine upon us. May our going out and our coming in be a blessing. And may his Shekinah glory cover you and your children and your entire family. May the Lord God Almighty be with you throughout this week and even beyond this week to the end of the year. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.